So there has been a lot of Jay Crowder trade news recently, and one team that I didn't expect to really pop up has they kind of come out of nowhere. That, of course, being the New York Knicks, where it is being reported that the Knicks are definitely interested in trying to trade for Jay Crowder and are currently in the mix to try and make this happen. And this is all being reported by Sam Amico. What's actually interesting as well on this is there's actually been a couple of other reports here and there that does suggest that Evan Fournier is unhappy with his role and one of those reports is coming from Basket USA. And I did see another report here which didn't exactly have that great of a source, but something that kind of coincides with what I've just said then actually saying that Evan Fournier was not only unhappy this season, but is, was unhappy last season and could actually request a trade if his role doesn't improve. Now, I'm not exactly sure what Evan Fournier's role is on this New York Knicks team because if we're going to say that he's going to be a three-point shooter for this team, he's been pretty average from three this season, averaging 33%. Again, he's only played 20 minutes as well uh, and started seven of the 13 games, averaging around seven points and two rebounds. I'm not exactly sure what's going to be going on with Evan Fournier right there. They do look like they want to start Cam Reddish over him right now. And it is a really weird, I think, starting five. Because if you look at it right now, Jalen Brunson, RJ Barrett, Cam Reddish, Julius Randle, and, uh, and um, Mitch Robinson. There's not someone in there who you're like, yeah, this guy's going to average me 40% from three. Like... You look at it right now, Julius Randle for the season at the time making this video is 33%. Cam Reddish at the time making this video is 32%. RJ Barrett is 25%. And of course, Jalen Brunson sits at a measly 30%. So it's really, really bad. They're probably not the worst three-point shooting team in the game just because the Lakers kind of sit there. But I feel like they're definitely going to be looking for someone to add. And I really do think when it does come to this offseason, there is, oh, in the trade deadline, sorry, there's going to be actually a big change up of things. And I do think Jay Crowder would actually low key be an interesting player to try and trade for. Because at the time I'm making this video, I think they've got a lot of players up for trade when it comes to the deadline. And I think they'll be able to move on from half of them. But the other half, not so much. We know that Randall's probably going to be up for trade. Will they trade him? Probably not. Emmanuel quickly has already been said he's going to be up, that they're going to put him up for trade, it looks like. Same with Derek Rose. That rumor has been going around for ages that Derek Rose and quickly will both be up for trade. Evan Fournier, I think, is going to be up for trade. And I think there's been a little rumor going around right now, and not even just now, in the past season or two, that they're going to upgrade on center and potentially move on from Mitch Robb. Again, Miles Turner, I can't describe how much he would fit this team perfectly. His defense would be absolutely exceptional and fit in with how Tom Thibodeau likes to run his team. Not just that, you finally give them a three-point shooter in that lineup. Miles Turner shooting about 37% from three this season. And I think his career average is about 34 or 35, which is pretty elite for a center. So when it does come to Jay Crowder, I do think this is actually going to be a move that they should 100% explore. How they match up contracts, I'm not exactly too sure. Crowder will be on around $10 million, and I don't see the Phoenix Suns really wanting Evan Fournier. I think Evan Fournier needs to go to a team, you know, like the Lakers, who are looking for a three-point shooter to start on around 30 minutes again. On the Knicks, he's not get, being able to get into that three-point shooting rhythm. He's being brought off the bench and playing 20 minutes per game and all of that type of stuff, which he's just not used to in his career. If he went to a team that actually needs like a designated three-point shooter to start and play 25 to 30 minutes, I think he would flourish a lot more there. Phoenix isn't that team, so who Phoenix really want from the Knicks is going to be a, I think, interesting question. A player who I actually think would be pretty cool for the Phoenix Suns would be Derrick Rose. Now, Derrick Rose hasn't been that good this season, only playing around 13 minutes, but he's still scoring seven points per game and on 37% from three as a pretty decent, efficient scorer. And I believe his contract is about $13 million. So if I'm the Phoenix Suns, although they don't need a backup point guard, 
you can definitely add another scorer here and there. It's something what they struggled with in the playoffs. You know, when Devin Booker was kind of locked down, they couldn't really rely on a dude like Cam Payne and Mikhail Bridges and DeAndre Ayton to put up those big buckets like they wanted to. It just didn't really work out in the playoffs. They looked like they needed an, an extra scorer. And again, they tried to address this in free agency. They brought in Damian Lee, who's a low-key underrated scorer who played for the Warriors. My thinking is if they wanted to bring in another guard who can score and consistently play the 10 to 15 minutes back up per game, I think Derrick Rose would be cool. Not just that, it gives you more room and flexibility to, of course, rest Chris Paul, who, again, is 37 years old, is definitely going to miss some games during the season. So again, bringing in Derrick Rose, you would have another guard, and again, it would, I think, work a little bit better. In my opinion, if they were to do this trade, it would just be a straight swap. We know that Jay Crowder doesn't really have any worth in this league anymore. He's not, well, I mean, in terms of trade value, he'd be awesome on a team, of course. But again, it's just that he hasn't played for a bit now and he refused to play. So it's pretty much like, well, you're going to have to get something for him. So I feel like teams have the leeway when it does come to this. And Again, a straight swap for Derek Rose would actually be beneficial, I think, for both teams. I don't think the Knicks really need another ball handler slash scorer. While the Suns could definitely use one, I feel like, especially when you're resting Chris Paul. Um, or, again, in the playoffs, if that does come to it where you need another scorer, that would be helpful. And again, the Knicks, I feel like, if you look at it, Crowder would work perfectly with how Thibodeau does love his defensive game plan and system. And of course, he can help out with the three-point shooting that they desperately need too. Again, you're probably going to have to start him as well, or he's just going to leave in free agency. We know every time he doesn't get the starting role, he cracks the shit. I mean, that's the whole reason he's pretty much not playing for Phoenix. It's because they said they would start Johnson over him. So, <laughs> the way I see it is, you're probably going to have to start him. And it can be done. You could put him at small forward there. Especially considering it doesn't look like they're that confident on Reddish. And Reddish would still be beneficial off the bench, I think. So yeah, you could definitely start him at that small forward position. He'd add a three-point shooting and defense. Which is what they, of course, want. And what they need when it comes to the shooting. But of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. For the latest NBA content and NBA news, don't forget to comment your thoughts and opinions on this down below. Do you guys think that the, you know, Phoenix Suns and potentially New York Knicks should pull a deal that looks like this? Of course, I would very much like to know. Again, don't forget to subscribe to my sport, uh, sports channel, which is this one, my iRoll slash vlogging channel, and my gaming channel. All of them will be getting linked in the description down below. But as I was saying, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Through the